So today we're gonna to be demonstrating ultrasound guided peripheral nerve block placement on both the upper and the lower extremity. Um, so in just a moment, I'm gonna go through the equipment and the things that you need prepared and ready uh, so that you have everything on hand uh, for when you start the procedure. Uh, before I do that, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna prep the patient uh, so we'll allow for adequate time for the prep to dry uh, while we're getting the rest of our equipment ready. Uh, so after I prep the patient, uh, we'll go ahead and run through all of the equipment and the things that we have ready. All right, so you're gonna start in the center, uh, nice wide prep, and this is gonna be, of course, for an interscaling block. All right, so we're gonna prep this nice wide area, and this is all gonna be draped out um, in just a few minutes. All right, so while we're allowing for that prep to dry, let me quickly go over the equipment that we're gonna need. Um, so first of all, notice that we have the patient on oxygen uh, and monitors, uh, that's critical because uh, before we do the pr procedure, we're gonna be sedating the patient. So we need to make sure they uh, have oxygen and monitors. So I have some fentanyl and Versed available. Uh, we have the ultrasound machine. Along with that, we have a sterile ultrasound probe sheath. Um, we uh, have uh, PPE, so I have a face mask, sterile gloves. Um, I have a sterile field that I've already opened with some sterile towels and I'm gonna be dropping the sterile, um, the sterile equipment that's needed for the procedure onto my sterile field uh, once we're about to get started. Um, I have my echogenic needle uh, for placement of the block, and then I have my tubing uh, that's gonna be connected to the needle with my local anesthetic and flush that'll be connected at the three-way uh, stopcock. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm gonna start by uh, putting on some PPE, uh, face mask. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open the sterile uh, pieces of equipment that are needed and drop them onto my sterile field. So I'm gonna drop my needle, and then drop my uh, probe cover and sterile gel onto the field. All right, got a rubber band there, great. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and prepare my uh, anesthetic here. This is done non-sterily, and this is going to be handed to me during the procedure by an assistant, but I'm going to go ahead and have it ready in the meantime. So we're going to load up the local and a flush syringe, and I'm going to go ahead and prime the line. All right, great. So we'll turn that off, we'll have that ready. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give my patient uh, a little bit of sedation. And so I'll ask my assistant to do that for me. All right, and at this point, we're ready to go ahead and put on our gloves and get started with the procedure. All right, so I'm gonna get ready to don my gloves here, my sterile gloves, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my hands. All right, so at this point, we're ready to drape the patient. We're gonna grab our sterile towels. Uh, Mr. Smith, I'm gonna be putting some uh, drapes on you here. I'm just gonna ask you to hold real still. We're gonna just keep you nice and clean during this part of the procedure. All right, so we want a nice wide area. All right, and Mr. Smith, this last drape is gonna go over your face a little bit. Um, Hopefully we won't be there for too long while we do this procedure real quick. And the last step to, uh, we have before we're ready to actually start the procedure is to place the sterile probe cover onto the ultrasound probe. Um, and at this point, I'm gonna need some uh, help from an assistant. All right, and this is the part where hopefully we don't struggle too much. Here we go, all right, let me get the part for you. So I'm making sure at all times not to touch uh, any part that's not sterile and he can grab the end. Thank you, son. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull the cover nice and tight here, all right, so that there's no air in between the, uh, the cover and the probe itself. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this rubber band back twice, uh, and that looks great. Uh, this is patient John Smith, medical record number 12345678, date of birth January 27th, 1967. 
Uh, he's here today uh, for us for a uh, right-sided interscaling block. His consent is signed. The right side is marked. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and get started. We are going to place a little bit of gel here on the patient. We still should have some on the inside of our probe cover as well. I'm going to palpate the clavicle. I'm going to place my probe. I'm going to make sure to identify that the left side of the screen is going to be the side that's closer to me. So when I do insert a needle, uh, it should be coming in from the left side of the screen. So I'm starting distal. I'm walking my way up, looking for landmarks, and it looks like I'm seeing my nerve roots there. Let's go ahead and identify the blood vessels. All right. We want to avoid that. You see the artery a little bit off screen in the vein. Okay, and so there's my target to the right side of the screen from about one to two and a half centimeters depth. I have that slanted traffic light. Those are going to be my cervical uh, nerve roots. Uh, that's my target for the inner scaling block. All right, and so I have my hand resting gently on the patient's face. I don't want to push down too hard, but I do want to have a nice steady support for uh, keeping that probe nice and still when I go ahead and uh, place the needle. Uh, I've unsheathed my needle and I'm going to get ready to go ahead and place the needle. Okay, and so you should see my needle approaching the target there. If you can't see your needle, you may need to kind of tilt your probe a little bit side to side until you can see it. And there's a nice view of my needle tip. All right approaching the target and I can kind of wave it up and down there right by those nerve roots. So at this point I would go ahead and ask my uh, assistant or whoever is helping me to go ahead and connect that local anesthetic. Uh, I'd probably inject a little bit of saline just to see a nice little hydro dissection uh, and then I can go ahead and inject the local. All right and so at this point I'm happy with my uh, needle placement. Uh, I've had my assistant connect the local anesthetic to the end of this needle. Um, and at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and ask him to inject, but before I do, I'm gonna have him aspirate, um, make sure we're not intravascular, make sure we don't see any blood coming back in the catheter. And once we confirm a negative aspiration, we'll go ahead and we'll inject the local anesthetic. All right, Mr. Smith, we're getting ready to inject that medication now. Um, you might feel uh, a little bit of ringing in your ears, uh, a little bit of a metallic taste in your mouth. I want you to let me know if you have any of those symptoms. Um, and at this point, I'm gonna be paying close attention to my, uh, my EKG as well, looking for any changes, the possibility of an intravascular uh, injection. All right, so you can see my needle is right there by C6. I'm gonna inject local. I'm gonna actually back out a little bit. You can see me retracting the needle. I'm gonna come a little more superficial so that I can go ahead and inject right by C5. We would inject there, and then I can steepen my angle and see if I can get all the way down near C7. All right, and that's it. That is your inner scaling block.